Imagine being the god of the underworld, and people just assume you to be evil. Sadly, your imagination is the reality of the one of the very few loyal gods from the Greek mythology. If you haven't guessed already, it's Hades that we're going to talk about today. And we're sure that after watching this video, you'd probably feel that he was perhaps the most underrated god from the Greek legends. Now, let's get right into it. So, despite being one of the most well-known Greek gods, Hades was not an Olympian, as he was the Greek god of the dead, whose kingdom was the underworld rather than the world of the living. He was so stunning and feared that his name became synonymous with his realm. Along with his brothers Zeus and Poseidon, he is one of the three most powerful Greek deities. But as soon as he and his four siblings were born, their father, Kronos the Titan, devoured them all. Later, Zeus ordered the Titan to release them, and with her help, he drove the Titan gods from heaven and imprisoned them in the depths of Tartarus. The partition of the cosmos was then decided by lot between the three successful brothers, and Hades was given the third chair, the gloomy underworld, and his jurisdiction. For his appearance, he was none less than a typical bad boy in today's time. He was shown as a majestic dark-bearded deity, and surprisingly, even after being this handsome, and with the history of Greek gods having numerous affairs, Hades was perhaps the most loyal to his spouse. But the story of his love is an interesting one. He asked his brother Zeus to give him one of his daughters, since he was in need of a spouse. So Zeus allowed him Demeter's daughter, Persephone. Zeus even agreed to the girl's forced abduction knowing that Demeter would oppose the union. When she realized what had happened, Demeter brought about a severe famine that wasn't to stop until her daughter was brought back. Zeus was then pushed to give in, as he wanted to save humanity, and so Persephone was retrieved from the underworld. However, she always longed to stay with Hades for a certain amount of time every year, because she had already eaten the pomegranate seed that were subject to black magic performed by Hades. But all of it was only out of one thing, love. You see, Hades was remarkably devoted to his wife, and she to him, unlike other gods. The only instance of her wandering gaze was when she attempted to seize Adonis from Aphrodite, and Hades was only distracted by two other women, who were both nymphs. And here's the story. The river of the underworld, known as the Cacitus' daughter, was named Minthi. She tried to woo Hades because she loved him. He either endured or returned her affections, depending on the narrative. In one of them, Minthi made love to him. Persephone protested to her mother after realizing what had happened. Minthi boasted that Hades would exile Persephone in favor of her because he loved her more. In response, either Demeter or Persephone changed Minthi into a herb, the first mint plant. The second woman woman was Luce, Hades' first cousin and daughter of the titan Oceanus. He was so in love with her that he took her to the underworld, where she spent the rest of her days. Persephone put up with her being Hades' concubine just as much as he put up with Adonis. Hades transformed Luce into the white poplar after her natural death. He gave this tree the utmost respect by putting it in Elysium, since it was holy to the gods. Luce's nature was sometimes seen as a doublet of Persephone, and when the two were combined, they were seen as the goddess of regeneration. Now for the most exciting part, his pet, the protector of the underworld and the three-headed hound of Hades, named Cerberus. He was the child of monster Echna and the demon giant Typhon. He was therefore related to Chimera, the Orthos with two heads, and the Lernaean Hydra, which Hercules subsequently destroyed. Cerberus, however, was considerably more kind to everyone except those who made an attempt to leave the underworld. Moving on, since ancient times, it has been widely accepted that the term Hades derives from a word that means unseen, invisible. This is partially because Hades was the least visible of the gods, almost never leaving his home in the underworld and even less frequently visiting Olympus. On top of that, nobody on Earth mentioned his name in a direct way. However, Hades received another gift when the Cyclops gave Zeus lightning bolts and Poseidon his spear. This item, often referred to as the Cap of Invisibility or the Helm of Hades could make its wearer invisible. Its strength played a significant role in Hades in the Olympian story over the Titans. Hades occasionally let people borrow his helmet too, like during the Trojan War. His niece Athena stole the cap to conceal herself from Ares. She used it to help Diomedes recover so that he might defeat Ares. The helm was also taken by his nephew Hermes, who used it to overpower the enormous Hippolytus. He only let one human borrow the headgear. Perseus, a son of Zeus, was the hero 
hero in question, with permission to lend it to the hero on his expedition to battle the Gorgon Medusa, Hades gave the helm to Athena, or maybe to the Stygian nymphs. Perseus wore the hat and Hermes' winged shoes to flee from Steno and Urali, Medusa's fury sisters, after she had been killed. Now let's see why he is arguably the most noble god by actions. Orpheus was a mythological poet, musician, and prophet in Greek mythology who had the power to enchant anyone or anything with a song. When Orpheus' loving wife Eurydice passed away, he was overcome with sadness and made the decision to travel to the kingdom of Hades and ask the god to free his wife. Orpheus made the difficult voyage to the underworld with the help of his lyrical music in order to ask Hades and Persephone to join him. Hades was moved to remember his love for Persephone after hearing his tale of romance, and the queen shed tears of joy as she thought lovingly of her mother, Demeter. When Orpheus's love and devotion for Eurydice finally stirred them, they bestowed upon him a privilege that no mortal had ever attained, enabling Eurydice to return to the world of the living. There was only one requirement, though. Neither Orpheus nor Eurydice were allowed to look back while climbing. Unfortunately, Eurydice was dragged back into the underworld when Orpheus turned around. Greek mythology depicted Hades as a deity who was largely charitable. He was both a deity of wealth and of unseen world, and he occasionally shared his wealth with the dead. He responded quite brutally, nevertheless, to anyone who opposed the law in his domain, like the story of Sisyphus, someone who was hated by every god as he was a cruel person. He frequently welcomed tourists and guests to his castle just to slaughter them and seize back control. Despite his propensity for murder and rape, Zeus was particularly enraged by this since it violated the guest privilege, a holy law. So he and Hades gave Thanatos, the god of death, the command to, to tie Sisyphus to a rock in Tartarus. Sisyphus inquired about the operation of the chains when he encountered Thanatos. When Thanatos agreed to show him, Sisyphus deceived him into believing he was being bound and managed to flee. Then the trickster was cursed by Hades and the Olympians so that his life would be so wretched that he would wish to end it. But before dying, he asked his wife to toss his nude body into the midst of the marketplace, which was his ticket back to life. How? In the underworld, the kind Persephone was convinced by Sisyphus that his wife had treated him disrespectfully, and so Persephone sent him back to the living world out of compassion. Knowing what had happened, Hades was enraged and sent Hermes to bring Sisyphus back to the underworld, and then punished him to spend all of the eternity pushing a rock up a hill. The boulder would tumble back to the bottom every time he came close to reaching the top, just so his arrogance could be destroyed each and every time. And that was the story of the most misunderstood god in Greek mythology. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can get notified when we come up with more such intriguing stories in the future. Signing off, yours mythically.